It's been like six years, Siri. Alexa can tell me jokes, Google Assistant can tell me jokes. I'm trying to laugh here. What's going on guys, this is Sam, and today I wanna to talk about the state of Siri on iOS 11. It's bad, and every year Apple seems to try harder to make Siri better. Like one year we'll get Siri kit with iOS 11, we'll get like just more knowledge, the platform gets smarter in general. Other years we don't really hear a lot about Siri, there's like minor changes in the background. And recently it, it feels like it's getting better. Like I feel like Apple wants us to think it's getting better, but there's still so many bugs with the platform that have been present for months in iOS 11, iOS 10, iOS 9, that just don't get addressed. And the very first thing that pops into my head is it's after midnight, um, technically it's 2 a.m. on a Saturday morning, but like it's Friday night because you haven't gone to sleep yet. So on Friday night at 2 a.m. or Saturday morning at 2 a.m. technically, I'll say, hey Siri, remind me tomorrow, I'm referring to Saturday, to go to the store at eight. And Siri will go, did you mean Friday, let's say December 21st or Saturday, December 22nd? And I'll say, oh, Saturday, December 22nd. And she goes, okay, I'll set a reminder. And then she shows go to the store, but it's set for 9 a.m. on Saturday. Regardless of if you say 8 p.m., 8 a.m., 6 p.m., 6 a.m., no matter what time you give Siri, every single time, if you ask her a question about something tomorrow after midnight and you even clarify the date, the time gets erased, it's 9 a.m. no matter what. You are going to the store at 9 a.m., you are getting out of bed, you're starting your Saturday at 9 a.m., which is just kind of a crazy idea for me as a college student and a lot of people in general. And I know the bug was not designed to get people out of bed at 9 a.m. on a Saturday morning, but the fact that it's there and it's been there for such a long time is super aggravating. And that's how I feel about Siri in general. Every year with iOS 11, with iOS 10, I'll make a video talking about new Siri improvements. Here's what I said about Siri in a video earlier this year. Wow. That is not a term that even humans have an easy time understanding when I mention it in person. Siri and iOS 11 was actually able to identify what I said and search YouTube and bring up some of my videos, which is actually pretty crazy. You can see I got iPad of us, which isn't that far off from a machine's perspective. But Siri and iOS 11 nailed that one. I'm impressed. And at the time, I'm blown away I'm impressed because it's right after the new firmware comes out. I'm excited for it. It is unquestionably better. But then when I start using it more and more, I realize that I'm just running into different issues that I didn't experience at that time that weren't present in iOS 10, but are new in iOS 11. This is, okay, this is a great example. So. Siri only searches the web when she has no idea what she's talking about. It's important that there's functionality there, that if Siri absolutely does not know something, searching the web for a phrase would be really handy. Searching Google or Bing or Yahoo for that makes sense. At the same time, that happens so often when she doesn't know something. For example, I was talking to Alexa and Siri for an example for this video. I was trying to figure out something that Alexa could do and Siri couldn't. And I said, hey Siri, what's the price of Bitcoin? Oh, she. So both of them picked up the coin instead of Bitcoin. First time I ask Alexa, "What's the price of Bitcoin?" Alexa's like, "Bitcoin is now trading for eleven thousand dollars." There's there's so many annoyances, and once again, <laughs> when it didn't know what to say, what do we get? Let me let me get it closer so you can see. I can search the web for X, and you get that with probably eighty percent of the searches that you do with Siri. I don't know what Apple's doing. I don't know what Apple's Siri team is doing. They're clearly working on something. We just got new features where you could ask Siri about the news that, that's cool. And that's why I'm saying unquestionably, Siri's getting better every year. I, I don't deny that. It is a fact that every year Siri is getting better. But it's like the rate that Alexa's going is, is not exponential, but it feels like that. The knowledge that Alexa has is unparalleled. And Google's Assistant also, it, it feels unparalleled because that's Google. Siri sort of feels like she started up here, went down, and now is like slowly going back up. It's like there's progress being made, but it's like you're digging a hole in the middle of a thunderstorm. That hole's gonna fill up with water, and you can get the water out at a decent rate, maybe even faster than it's coming into the hole, but at the same time, you've got a lot of work to do just to get back to where you started. There's so much the Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa can answer that Siri can't. 
where Google can tell me something or pull up an actually relevant result or Alexa will be verbal about describing something, Siri just goes, I'll search the web for this and I'll show you what the definition of this means, which is really not relevant at all. The last thing I wanna do is talk about all these problems without proposing a solution. So here's how I think Apple can fix Siri. Rather than focusing on any new features, I'm talking about iOS 12, iOS 13, let, let's go three years out all the way up to iOS 14. Focus on what's wrong with Siri now and correcting that and perfecting that. That's usually what Apple does. Rather than being the first to a product, they sort of flipped. They were one of the first phone manufacturers to introduce a powerful assistant on the iPhone 4S to the masses. And now other people have caught up and Apple just has this product that, that sort of works, but that nobody loves. I don't hear anyone ever say Siri is incredible. Siri is the best assistant on the market. No one says that because that would be fake news. I hear everyone talking about how Amazon Alexa is incredible and getting better every single day and how Google Assistant just knows so much that Siri doesn't. And that's because that's true. Siri doesn't know a lot. And rather than focusing on new features, on, on big ideas, on something that Siri's never done before, focus on refining the platform. So hypothetically, Apple takes my advice, they stop working on any new features that we haven't even heard about. Every single individual on the Siri team, Apple's upper level execs, they're focused on making Siri a better and more powerful assistant. They can answer everyday questions rather than suggesting web results. Now I would think, and I don't know this for a fact, but I would assume that Apple has search data for Siri. Top questions that are asked every year. I mean, Google has so much information on what people search on a daily basis, but questions that people ask Siri, Apple would look at the top 500, top 1,000 most asked questions and see what results they get. So if somebody's asking about the weather, Apple's gonna say, okay, that gives you the weather app data from there uh, of your current location. That seems like it's in a pretty good spot. I would agree. Then someone else asked a very specific question about where Bitcoin is trading right now. And Apple goes, oh shoot, like that doesn't give you anything except web results. How do we fix that? And realistically, Bitcoin probably isn't even within the top 500 or top 1000 most frequently asked questions using Siri. But look at that data, go step by step if you have to, ask Siri every question manually and see what Siri comes up with. If 50% of the results are showing, I can search the web for. If 40, 30, 20, 10% only are showing that, 10% is probably not that big of an issue. But I would, I would argue that some of the most frequently asked questions do show you web results a lot of the time. And for a lot of people, that's an issue. Very rarely when I'm around someone asking Siri a question, do they actually tap on the web result? They just go, oh, Siri didn't know. Because it's so much easier to hear, this is this way, rather than, I, you can search the web and do additional research if you'd like. You wanna listen to what Siri's saying, you're gonna read the first line of whatever Siri propagates, and you're gonna move on with your day. You're not gonna do additional research, then you'll have to just go to Google, type it in manually. It's a bad system, right? now and I, there's really nobody that likes it. Siri does fall short in a lot of places but one thing that I do want to highlight that is pretty much unparalleled when you compare Siri to anything else Alexa Google Assistant is how you can change the gender and the tone and the accent of the voice. Siri supports a lot a lot of different languages and you don't only have to have Siri as a female if you don't want to. You can switch it to male, you can switch it to other tones and accents, uh, like British English is one that I see a lot of people in the United States use because they like that accent. And I think that's really cool that you have the ability to change that. With Alexa, with Alexa and Google Assistant, you don't get to change a lot of that. You get one voice and a voice that sounds very robotic. Siri's voice is the best sounding voice on any assistant. Alexa sounds pretty good, I'll give that second place, but Google Assistant sounds like you're talking to, to some weird humanoid robot, I'm thinking Ex Machina, but even that sounded closer to Siri. Siri's just so far ahead of the game there, and I feel like that's what the Siri team has been working on, is working on Siri's voice. But regardless of how nice the voice sounds, if you're only getting web results for a lot of your top questions, Siri's not gonna be that helpful. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts about Siri down below. Do you think that Apple has some work to do for Siri? Or maybe you're one of those people who only ask Siri a few questions and Siri consistently works really well for you. Either way is totally okay. I've had an overall more negative experience because I tend to try to use Siri a lot. But if you've never used Siri before or you only use Siri occasionally, I mean, it's probably gonna work okay. Anyway, I wanna hear your thoughts down below. It's a fascinating platform. What Apple has done 
was very instrumental a while ago. It just feels like they've definitely fallen behind in recent years. That's gonna be all for this video. If you enjoyed watching, it does seriously help me out if you take one second to drop a like down below. And of course, hit subscribe for more videos like this in the future. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can head over to ipedatos.com slash merch and buy a t-shirt or hoodie. That would be incredible. For now, I've been Sam. I hope all of you are doing great, and I will talk to you in my next video. This is kind of a different video. I'm usually not super, this is terrible, this is bad, extreme negativity, but um, I, I can't be one of those Apple YouTubers who only looks at the positive. If a product's bad, I wanna be honest with you, and and I'm being completely honest, like, Siri's bad. No one paid me to make this video. It's not like I got Samsung revenue in my pocket. I think it's a common misconception that Apple YouTubers have to like everything, or, or people get kind of upset when I'll, I'll talk badly about an Apple product. It's my moral responsibility to be honest with you, and if a product is bad five or six years later, a product's bad five or six years later.